Hey, this is Alexi Lawless. There is nobody in U.S. soccer that is more important than the Cooligans. Yeah, baby, we're back! We are, and this Woo! is uh, an absolute honor. This is incredible. I'm, like, nervous. Are you? <laughs> Hell yeah. You're sitting amongst two Jersey legends. Yeah, I'm nervous <laughs> being around you mostly. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually probably a good idea, born and raised in Newark. No, this uh, is wild. Go this is it. absolutely insane. I mean, guys, you know, trust me, you know them. Some of you love them. <laughs> Some of you don't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving, put your hands together for the one, the only, New Jersey Zone. Giuseppe Rossi, everybody. Thank Giuseppe. you, guys. Thank you. Thank how you. does it, how, uh, you know, here we are, okay? Yeah. We're in New York, right? You're born and raised in Jersey, moved back to Jersey. You've yep. been all over the world. How does it feel to come back? Love being back. Yeah? Jersey's home. Jersey's home. I got my family. I have my friends. Uh, this is where it all started when I was young. Um, I grew up playing soccer. I grew up, uh, I grew up in Clifton, New Jersey. Shout out to Clifton. Yeah, yeah. Never uh, lost the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Clifton, New Jersey. Yeah, but, yeah but listen, some people say that I have. When I speak Italian, they like, oh, you have an American accent. When I speak, when I speak um, American, they're like, you got an Italian accent. And I speak Spanish too because I played seven years in, in Spain. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, you have an Italian accent, so I feel like I have an accent everywhere I go. <laughs> so just so not, okay. not accepted anywhere you the, go. You <laughs> Claro. Wow. Yo, claro. No, no see. Sí. You know, that's the test we do with all I our guests. Yeah. To see how much Spanish well, they know. Well, then you can stay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, cool. We can't talk shit about Giuseppe in Spanish. Remember that, everybody. You can curse on this if you want. Oh, wow. So, look, nice. first question we have to ask. Yes. What's up? Okay. Everybody wants to know. All yeah, right. <laughs> Briefs or boxes? No. Uh, you <laughs> should... <laughs> Take us back to the moment where you decide. You've said in other interviews, you've covered this already. When you chose Italy, it's framed as you chose Italy over U.S., right? Mm -hmm. Were you being sought after by both? Yeah, so, I mean, when I was younger, let's take it back to when I was a kid. <clears throat> My dad's Italian, fresh off the boat. And every Sunday we woke up watching the Serie A. My team was uh, AC Milan. We used to wear our jerseys. We used to watch it every time, every Sunday at, at 9 o'clock. And to give other people perspective, this yeah. is a time when soccer is not that popular. Clifton, probably, for sure. But in Jersey, in the U.S., it's not the number one sport. So wearing an AC Milan jersey, yeah. a few people knew what it yeah, was. Exactly. I mean, listen, to try and find a pickup game when I was young, impossible. Right. I used to go around with my bike. Yo, you want to play? Nah. Want to play? Nah. Want to play? Nah. So I'm like, all right. My pickup game was always in the backyard. Yeah, yeah. Me, well, you were asking Dominicans sister, playing baseball. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, that's not gonna happen. That's right? exactly. yeah, why are you kicking the ball? Pick it up. Don't do that to the ball. They love the baseball. Love the baseball. <laughs> it's easier, and at this time in Jersey, especially North Jersey, it's easier to buy crack than it is to find a pickup game. <laughs> I can't tell you, man. I left when I was twelve. I left when I was twelve. I can't tell you. <laughs> I grew up in a different neighborhood, I guess. <laughs> so I mean, listen, I, I left when I was twelve, and. Uh, and um, and I just had that like Italian soccer in my blood. It's yeah. just how it was. So I grew up idolizing AC Milan, idolizing the players from the national team. Roberto Baggio, he was one of my main guys on the national team, and uh, and it, and it was in my blood since I was a kid. What what part of Italy is your family from? Uh, La Bruzza Molise. So that's like southeast. Is that the uh, that's the heel? That's like. The Achilles tendon. The Achilles tendon. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stay away from that. Yeah. <laughs> the um, when you decided you, there were no social media, but you probably yeah. got a gist that the American fans weren't excited, right? Yeah, I, I felt it. I felt it. I, I think that's when like Twitter started getting popular. I think. Sure. Right. Yeah. Twenty ten is, right? that... is when you switched, right? What's that? Twenty ten is when you switched. No, 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 no. I switched when I was. What was it? Um. I, I, they called me up in 2005 to 2006 in yeah. the American national team. Um, so what was that? I'm 87, 2006. Let's do some math. Yeah. What was it 18, 19? Yeah, yeah. I was 18, 19 so, years old. You just stared at the kid who went to school in Newark, New Jersey to do math? <laughs> Let's be yeah, unless it involves fifths and eighths, not helping you out. Uh, <laughs> unless it slices, I can't help you out. Well, Talk about how trash the pizza is in Italy, by the way. It's trash, right? No, it's not. Come on, it's garbage. Bro, if you tell me that American pie is better than, than an Italian pie, 
I'm, I'm, Can you I'm just, walking off. I just want you to see what half of our logo is. <laughs> I'm considered a pizza expert, so we'll talk right, after this, buddy. By, by himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Voted by me. <laughs> no, I do pizza tours in the city, but we'll talk about but it. But there was, yeah, at that time, there was a, a, a lot of coverage about it because yeah. clearly, it, from, a, from a media perspective, soccer media perspective, this was a very big decision. But it was it, also yeah. like a controversy in soccer, so there was like a reason to now write about soccer, so you all of a sudden are plastered everywhere. Yeah, I mean... Like I said, I felt that backlash. I think there was like the time of Twitter. I'm on Twitter. I'm getting some bad, bad things said. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, listen, it's, it's I never disrespected American soccer. Of course, I never course. did that. Um, I was always grateful for the opportunity that they gave me. Um, so I just left that at that. And then obviously, you know, people could do and talk and do whatever they want. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, we're seeing it. Uh, I mean, it's not the first time it's happened, right? Where, yeah. where, where people can play for two different countries and they yeah. and, they, and they make their choice of what, not picking the U.S. Like Jonathan Gonzalez was like a recent choice for he could play for he Mexico. He chose Mexico. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is um, is that a rep? Is it like a? Do you think it's a thing where it's it's every person makes their individual decision, or there there might be something about. U.S. soccer that they're like, ah, oh, I, I, I'll pick the other one because it, it feels a little bit more stable. No, because. I chose Italy because that's what I grew up with. That was in my blood. There was nothing really where I'm like, all right, I'm going to weigh out the pros and cons. There was no pros and cons going. Like, like Italy was what I wanted, what I knew when, uh, when I was a kid, and I had that opportunity when I was 20, 21 to play for them. So, I mean, people can say what they want, man. Yeah, They're yeah, like, yeah. oh, yeah, because it's Italy. They won championships, blah, blah, blah. It's not that. It's not that. It was a dream. And the dream was alien. And that was your connection was, to soccer. And I was lucky enough to do it. Yeah. Now, looking back, is how, how did you become good enough to play for Italy in growing up in Jersey and not even having access to, like, academies and stuff that they have now? Is it just something that's innate, or do you think that you can duplicate that for someone else? Well, I mean, I, I think we all have talent, right? There's so, many, there's so many kids that are playing soccer today in America, right? And I feel like there's so much talent out there. All right. So how are we growing these kids? What are we telling them how the game is supposed to be played? How are we training them? Um, these are questions that American Saga has to ask themselves. Um, we have talents that come out every so often. We have uh, Pulisic right now, right? He's our main guy, right? All right, great. Before him, who do we have that, you know, is making it big in Europe? Uh, you. So, <laughs> probably, I think probably. Might, I might be. Probably. It might be. But I had to leave at 12. Yeah. I had to leave at 12 because, yes, I have talent. Yes, I'm a good player. I had to find that. I had to learn that being among those guys in Europe. Yeah. And, um, and I grew. I grew when you got player. offered at 12, though, did you think you were like, man, I'm good enough to play with? No, no, no. I mean, listen, I was 12, man. I was, I, I, I was crying to uh, – I was crying myself to bed every day. Um, I never wanted to tell my dad because me and my dad left together. And then we left my mom and my sister at home because somebody had to work, right? Yeah. Um, so I was crying myself to bed. But you couldn't get one of those sweet deals? I didn't want to show my dad. What? You couldn't get one of those sweet deals where they pay the family to be trainers? No, there's no, <laughs> there's you know, no paying there's at 12. Here's a, here's a bag of gems. There's no <laughs> paying at 12. <laughs> it wasn't like that. Man. It, it, um, it wasn't like that. But, bro, crying myself to bed every day. Then I didn't want to show my dad that I was, uh, you know, that I was weak. So, whatever. We just went on this journey. We just went on this journey. And um, that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to what you hear uh, uh, Pulisic talk about it with his yeah. dad, Mark Pulisic, where they, yeah, it's like this gamble. Like, is, is yeah. this going to happen? It's and, a shot in the dark. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, but it, but it, wor it worked out. I mean, and you are uh, one of the most, uh, as far as American, uh, you know, People born in the U.S. and uh, and be able to one of the most storied, well traveled, uh, uh, incredible uh, career. Uh, yeah. What is uh, what's happening now? Because we see uh, all this every couple uh, uh, two three times a year. I see just just have training, Rossi, with, training different, with this team, Manchester right? United. I think LAFC, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I mean, listen, I'm 32. I'm still young. Right. I still have um, I still have a few years, some very high level years ahead of me. Um, you know, I've had the injuries, unfortunately, so that kind of um, um, ruined a little bit. Yeah, yeah. My uh, momentum, I guess. My, yeah, yeah, my momentum and my career. Um, but I've I've always got back in track. 
Um, I had the um, I had the opportunity of uh, training with Man U. You know, my ex team. I had a lot of uh, I have a lot of connections. You know, Ferguson is still um, a very great mentor to me. Um, you could just talk text to him, Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah, he's cool. Well, he's an amazing <laughs> guy. He's an amazing right. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm not going to stop looking at Giuseppe's phone yeah, right I know. now. Is he texting right now? He's an amazing guy. He's yeah. an amazing guy. You know, I'm very fortunate to have, um, to, have, uh, to have had that opportunity in those three years I had Man U with him. Um, and, yeah, training two months with them, it was great. Um, and now it's off-season. Off-season, you know, it's all this, like, you know, buying, who's buying this, who's buying yeah, that. Yeah. So we'll see what happens now. What made of all the places you lived? What made you want to come back uh, to the U.S.? You've made a home for yourself again in Jersey, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jersey's home. Yeah, I just got married last month. Congrats! Oh, she's congrats, from New man. Jersey. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Um, uh, she's from Jersey, so we have all our family here. So whenever it's the off season, if it's Christmas, whenever, when we have those five days off, it's back here. Um, the month we have off in June, it's always back here. Uh, so this is where it's going to be. Yeah. Till you know, when I retire, we're all coming back here. I, I, Jeez. I, you you were talking about your your time uh, at Man U. Uh, I'm I'm curious where uh, at your young age. When did you feel like oh something absolutely clicked? Where like I'm I'm getting this. I'm understanding this. Like at what point of that progression from that moment when you got to uh, to to Europe and your and turning pro? Yeah. So I started off at Parma. Parma is an Italian team, right? So uh, from 12 to 17, I was with them. Um, Man U scouted me when I was 16. Um, I was already getting like a couple of training sessions in with the first team at Parma. Um, so that was great because it was my first time interacting with pro players, right? Um, I held my own and I'm like, all right, you know what? Like, this is, this is good. Like, you know, we're doing something here because I'm progressing, I'm learning, I'm getting better, stronger, whatever it is. Did you call your friends and be like, yo, they ain't shit out here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, just because right. we watch them on TV, my guy, they're not that impressive. They ain't even that big. You I know. Know. Listen, I didn't <laughs> have a cell phone. Yeah, no. at 14, 15, man. Yo, they never even been to the Willowbrook I Mall. Did. I mean, they're not I that impressive. Not. <laughs> yeah. I did not have no cell phone. Yeah. I, I used to write letters to my friend. Oh, amazing. But, um, but yeah, so then I got, then at 17, I, I got picked up with them, with uh, Manu. And that's when I had my first first time, like with at a high level, first team, playing with Ryan Giggs, Ronaldo, Scholes, Rooney, name it. They were there, and um, and yeah, I was I was holding my own, and I was like, I want to keep doing this. Like I want to keep trying to get better. I want to keep proving that I could go and beat you, uh, Rio Ferdinand. I want to prove that I could go and beat you, Mikel Silvestri. I want to score on you, Tim Howard. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. So it's like I wanted to keep doing it. Keep trying to get better, better, and, um, and, you, and you end up you did score on Tim Howard. Uh, yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Confederations <laughs> Cup. Yeah. yeah that's uh, it. Was it was it a question when you did score? Actually, to bring that up, a uh, bit of a celebration. Yeah. Anyone? Uh, people were probably upset about that. Yeah. Were, were, did you ever consider maybe not celebrating? Was that or you were like, no, this is the I team I played for. About it, man. Yeah. Who cares? I was right? thinking about it. Those are my first games. That was the first time I scored two goals with the national team. I mean, Pirlo it passes you the ball you, and you score, just, you celebrate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it's, um, there, were, there was no, there, were, there was nothing bad about him, and I was just happy. No. <laughs> well, First time I met Pirlo, we argued, I told him he didn't know anything about pizza, and, uh, <laughs> One of the other players goes, is this the first time you ever speak to Pirlo? I go, yeah, why? He goes, and you're going to yell at him about pizza? I'm like, it's a good point, actually. If you yell, if you yell at him about wine, he'll probably fight you. Oh, no, yeah. Okay, wine, yeah. No, I wasn't no, going to no, hear. That's not, yeah. I can tell you that. His sneaker had, like, uh, was wine colored, and it was cork on the inside. That was his official Pirlo sneaker when he played for NYCFC. That's crazy. I was like, it's a bit much. He uh, loves wine. <laughs> so we um uh, we have a, a a group of dedicated fans that, uh call, we call them the Gully Squad. Have you, have you ever heard the term Gully? Like, when yeah, something that, so. that's really You might have left right before that pop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like, it just means like it was like a hip hop thing for someone who's like they say what they want, they do what they want, like you, right? right? Gully. Right? right. Now it's like we we use it for soccer now. Like right, for cool. every time Soccer AM makes fun of American soccer, we clap back. Gotcha. So we call ourselves we're the Gully of Soccer Podcast. So now they're called Gully Squad. Exactly. So, right. so we have uh, we have the Gully Squad, and they uh, they had a couple questions for you. So some of them sure. uh, were re really great, and I wanted to uh, re uh, re relay them to you. So uh, Mike Shar, he asked, uh, as a former former uh, Fiorentina player. Mm -hmm. What do you think of Rocco Camiso buying the club? Uh, also, can you sign for the Cosmos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real happy there that he threw in that. <laughs> no, man, that's crazy. It's crazy that, like, an Italian-American with, like, the same history as, you know, my father, my uncles, my mother and everything, like, they're able to be successful here in America, um, create a, a fortune, and then come back and being able to... Uh, 
to buy a team like Fiorentina, I, I think it's great. I think it's great for him. I think it's great for the uh, for Florence. You know, I played there for three years. Um, unbelievable fan base, unbelievable city. It's just awesome. All right. Iconic Nintendo shirt. We got one from uh, yeah. Chip jo- Chip Robinson. Robinson. He says, uh, "You ever think about joining MLS?" And uh, second question is, "What is he? What do you think about the current state of Manchester United?" Yeah, the, uh, the MLS is always um, an intriguing club. Uh, not club. Uh, li- uh, league to come to to play. Um, you know, I've had um, a couple months of training with Red Bull. I got to know a lot of people there great people the like the level of play is um is very good so you know that's something that um is always in the back of my mind um the level the current level of man U, i mean Solskjaer is the man for me i believe that he could uh bring it back to what it is he knows what it is to win he he knows what he has to do in order to get uh the right um atmosphere in in the changing room uh, trying to make the players understand how important it is to wear that shirt and to come out and um, and win. So they're in they're in very good hands right now. What what as far as having uh, played for Manchester United, yeah. uh, you know I don't think uh, have we met anyone that has played for Manchester United? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I just, it, it is just a legendary club. I mean, what what is uh, like what has the just the the brand the, the, had an effect on you? Like, what does it mean to you to have been a Manchester United player? Well, it's huge, man. I mean, what was I seventeen? I went to the summer. Um, like the summer preseason, we uh, we went to Asia, we went to South Africa, and I'm like, yeah, all right, nobody's gonna really know who the hell we are, even though Manchester is huge, mm-hmm. China and South Africa, bro, man, they were mobbing us, <laughs> they were mobbing me, they had signs of me of a 17 year old like in the stands, yeah, and I'm yeah. like, you know who the hell I am? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you go up there like, how you know? Who I am? <laughs> I'm like, how do you know who I am? I'm like, I just signed, so I could just imagine. What like Ronaldo and Rooney and of all that had uh, um, had to had to go through when they were going. Um, uh, what what uh, I'm curious about your uh, relationship with Rooney. I mean, we were just in D.C. watching uh, D.C. United take a, uh, oh, cool. on against uh, the Revolution. Uh, what has I mean? It's great seeing him in MLS. I, I know a lot of people will probably yeah, want to cool. see you in MLS as well. Uh, what is it? Uh, th- th- this now that the MLS has definitely. But when you were uh, uh, younger, MLS was like. You know, we looked down upon without a doubt, right? There must yeah. have been a couple well, jokes was, in the locker room, right? There was a few. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was young. It was like a young, young league, right? Yeah. I, I mean, now, like you said, you got Rooney playing here. You got Zlatan playing here. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's just like crazy the growth that is had in these past years. Is it is it like uh, uh, generally more intriguing intriguing because of that? Because there there seems to be one a uh, uh, real fanfare, yeah. uh, uh, an opportunity to actually probably make have a better paycheck. Does that when you were mentioning that? Oh, it was in the back of your mind. Yeah. Is it more forward in your mind now? Well, probably just because you know it's getting. I'm um, in the last what uh, four, five, four or five, six years, years of yeah, my yeah. career, um, so you have to start. You know, thinking of how you want to, or how much you have left in the tank. Which, by the way, I'm 32, but I'm really 28 in soccer years because I lost four years in injury. Okay. So I'm still a young gun over <laughs> All here. All good. It's good All for right. contract. The mileage ain't too long. You know, you're good. <laughs> He's like, I have about uh, how many years is it? So I get one final big contract. So uh, at three. <laughs> there you go, bro. You should be my agent, man. Hell you yeah. Be my agent. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's definitely something that I think many people would like to play here, just because of how it's growing. You always want to be part of something that's growing. You always want to uh, try something different. Um, you got fan bases that are growing every single year. Uh, viewerships are up even at home. Um, stadiums are amazing. Stadiums are amazing. So it's um, so it's cool, man. It's cool. It's always intriguing for anybody from Europe to come out here. All right. If you if you could pick one league outside of MLS, outside of the U.S., yeah. uh, you've played in a couple of different, uh, where you think you'd want um, – the last six, seven years of your career to be? If you could pick one, where would it be? I know Serie A is on the up and up again. Premier League, of course, huge. Serie A is going on, man. I love La Liga. I love La Liga oh, yeah, in Spain. Yeah. Man, that was, like, amazing just because it's my brand of uh, soccer. Um, it's the technical game. It's the game where they're not scared to try something. Um, it's always attacking. Um, there's more space involved, so that's always good for a striker. So that's where I had a lot of success, and um, yeah, man. Do people? Cool. I mean, uh, we always get like a lot of comments whenever we talk about a lot of leagues. Like we try to, like our commitment has been to like grow the American game, right, and yeah. just make it seem, uh, make it feel more relevant, stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, we we're not we're not thinking like MLS is the greatest league ever, but yeah. like 
one day that'd be cool, right? Of course. But there's a, there's always a lot of uh, arguments or debate about like what is the best league? Like a uh, uh, Premier League is uh, because of the most of viewership and and the, and the teams. But they, people c- consist- consistently say that La Liga has the most attractive and the best. Is the game is played the best there? Is that what you, would you lean? So you you gotta look at a foot. I have a soccer. I was about to say football standpoint. Soccer <laughs> You can say standpoint. football. Go for it. Yeah, but I don't want people to get confused. Yeah. <laughs> soccer standpoint, right? Soccer is played with the ball. If you know what to do with the ball, that's soccer, man. Like, yeah. that's exactly what it is. Moving off the ball. Like, that's what it is. I could get very technical, but I'm not going to No, go for it, man. Right? <laughs> um, that's La Liga play right there. That's La Liga. Now, if you want to look at the English Premiership, yeah, it's more entertaining because it's more physical, a lot of running. Um, fans are like really into everything. A tackle, they go crazy. Um, but that's the total opposite of what La Liga offers. So if you want to really look at um, the way soccer should be played with the ball, um, with your, with a, a, like a soccer IQ of how you know teams should go up and down the field. Yeah. yeah. Um, Spanish soccer is definitely okay. Big. What do you think about Germany? Because Germany seems to be a blend of La Liga oh, big. and uh, and Premier League. It's growing. It's yeah. growing. It's growing. It's um, it's growing big. Um, you're having you always have Bayern that are always like you know the the team that's uh, that's um, that's winning it all. But you know you have Borussia that's a very young team. Um, they're coming up. Um, you have uh, Red Bull Leipzig. You have Tyler Adams playing there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's doing very well. Um, and there's a, there's actually a lot of Americans playing in Germany. I didn't yeah, know. Germany yeah. has like a real big connection in yeah, the yeah. U.S. as far yeah, as you. That's crazy. Is there one team in any of those leagues where you look at and you're like, dude, if you just had a Giuseppe Rossi, <laughs> like where where do you think you'd <laughs> slot right in and be like, I could help this team? Man, uh, I don't know. I could help any team. I, there, <laughs> there ain't one team that I'm like, yeah. Um, we could use you on Arsenal. <laughs> I, <guess. laughs> I actually have somebody on Twitter that I follow that goes crazy. Some like journalist and. In England, he's always bashing Arsenal. Why? Yeah, because it's Arsenal. We're a punching bag. All right. <laughs> yeah, I answered it. All right. <laughs> uh, this was a, a question from uh, uh, Landon Cottom. He asked, uh, uh, "You were born in the in the U.S. You have strong Italian roots and sp- spent a lot of time in Spain. If you weren't a soccer player and yeah. had a regular job, which of these countries uh, would you prefer to live in?" I, I would have definitely lived in America because I would have never left America if it wasn't for soccer. Okay. That's right. He wants to be close to the Willowbrook Mall. He wants to be close to Dickie D's Italian hot dogs. Get out of here. No, I'm not a big fan of the Willowbrook Mall, though. No? I mean, who is? Uh. <laughs> I worked there as a teenager, though. Um, looking, looking at your career now, uh, you know, look, you've got a couple years playing. Yeah. you still got some great skill. What comes after that for you? Because one of the things I keep hearing from this conversation, I've heard in yeah. other interviews, is that you have, in your brain, a defined way you think the game should be played. Yeah, definitely. Um and I asked before what made you good enough to even be to to be to go to Parma at twelve. Is it what you knew what you knew then? Is that something you could pass on to the youth here? You think in the future, or do you think you can help shape that, or do you think you could take a professional team to the highest limits? Where do you think you would fall in line? So, if we're talking about after career, for me, it's it's very important to give back. Give back why? Because. Um, I want the soccer here in America. I want the youth. Um, I want them to express their full potential in soccer because I feel like that there's a lot, a lot of talent out here. Bro, we're 350, what, million people out yeah. here? Yeah. Like, we're all sons of immigrants. Yeah. Think about it. Like, I'm a son of an immigrant. I don't know if you guys are, but well, I feel here, like yeah. we all are. You know what I mean? Cuban, Dominican, so yeah. The, yeah. So, like, there's always, like, like, it's always in your blood. Like, it's, like, soccer is in, in, in the blood of all these people. So, to find a structure, to make them understand that this is what it takes. This is how you, this is how you have to go about your trade. Uh, make them just feel passionate about it, man. Because soccer just gives you like undescribable emotions during the game while you're watching it. So that's what I want to try and give back one day, and hopefully, um, hopefully change the scene. If there's something about the way uh, the, the youth. Uh, either academies are set up or the way the game is taught to to the young. What is like that thing that oh this is what they do in England, this is what they do in Italy, this is what they do in Spain that I would love to bring here. What is that 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 first thing that comes to mind? Structure, structure. So you got a young kid who's 12 years old. How I left, right? Um, they're looking like, all right, how can I make it to that level? How can I make it up to the MLS? Let's put it that way. Yeah. 
there's it's it's there's no structure or it's so complicated that that people just be like ah oh, this is like I don't know where to go like what's my next step because there's so many leagues there's so many teams there's tournaments uh, there's high school soccer but you can't play high school soccer if you play in a in a club team um, what's the level of high school soccer today um, college ball like who plays college ball anymore. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, do they yeah. or do or yes, they do play, but do they take it seriously? Do, do the pros come in and uh, and and look at the college soccer? No, they don't do no more. So, what's that step that that, that I have to take in like in order to get to there? So I feel like it, it's there's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of confusion. Um, so young kids, they reach 14, 15, 16, they're like, all right, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna maybe try some other sport or find some other interest. So you start. Like losing that that, that passion, passion. yeah, that diminishes it your talent pool too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, there's so much talent out here, man. So yeah. much, so much. It's just uh, it's unfortunate because uh, uh, like we, 100%. Yeah. But how do of we course, make money man. off these kids? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> bro, I just have you nailed it, bro. You nailed it. <laughs> nah, seriously, bro. Like the booth is all about like yeah. I gotta get into their into mom and dad's pockets. No, it's, it's, you know what's funny is we we've, we've done we do live podcasts. We have a whole booth at the U.S. Coaches uh, Convention Convention, yeah. mm. and when people mention like the ending pay for play, you could see people kind of tighten up because some of the coaches that are there are like, whoa, whoa slow down, easy. All right, nothing crazy, you know. <laughs> How do you think daddy pays for the beam? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like it's these kids. So you know? are they in it for the right interest or not? That's a lot of them are, yes. But yeah. there are some that certainly are just here to make a big old paycheck, you know. And problem. I was talking to one of the parents who was like club. The, my kid has two traveling teams, which I don't even know what that means. I don't have kids. There you go. But the, he's on two traveling teams, and both of them just want to win. So because he's fast, they just keep sending long balls to him exactly. because so the coach wants so to win. So you're not learning anything. So then that's point number three. What are we, what are we teaching them? How like who is teaching them? Do we have the right knowledge? Are are people teaching the game to these young kids have the right knowledge um, to better the player? Yeah. yeah. So. Would you want to be a that. coach or would you want to be someone who works for like I U.S. soccer? do not have patience to be a coach <laughs> just because I know how hard I, I am on myself. I'm a perfectionist. Um, so if I'm training somebody and then they don't do it, I start throwing a couple of F-bombs <laughs> and then they're running to their parents and I'm getting sued. <laughs> You're like, oh, that. you're gonna cry! I don't want that. I yeah. don't want that. Don't is want that, that possibly because maybe your dad was hard on you, and that's like he the said only he's way. Italian and oh. from New Jersey. Why was that even a question? <laughs> Not even a hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred and ten percent. Yeah, man. of course. Hundred. How many times did you hear the word "maron" when you missed the shot? <laughs> uh, I have his voice right here. Yeah. Uh, every training session, every game, but I love it. I love it. Yeah, of yeah. course. I mean, it made you into because I'm somebody that likes to prove people wrong. So if my pops used to be like, "Hey," Um, you did this wrong. What the hell are you doing? I'm like, like I, I, I don't get down. I'm like, yo, shit, I want to play like right now so I can show my dad yeah, yeah. or I can show whoever it is. Like even today, my, you know, the haters and all that shit. Yeah. I'm going to say, yo, I'm going to prove you wrong because just that's how I was brought up. Yeah, that's yeah. Is. That, that is like the mentality. I even had that with my dad where I'm like, you know, at, at, at oh, when you, you both turn- had dads? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Change subject, bro. What are you doing? <laughs> well, as a, as a teen, all of a sudden, your dad is like your hero. And then when you become a teenager, he becomes like a villain. And you're like, oh, oh, you're, I'm going to... Yeah, bro. Yeah. Always yeah. arguing, right? Always yeah, yeah, arguing. yeah. I'm going to show you. I'm going to do what you couldn't or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, something happens, but... So, <laughs> Some of us get to that villain stage a little early. <laughs> <laughs> if I knew what that dude looked like. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, uh, uh, that's wh- how you make a comedian. Dude, uh, well, I got one more question. What's, up, what's, what's one food that you could get in Jersey, even Italian food, that you just couldn't find in Italy, and you were like, "Yo, if y'all just knew about this, uh, Taylor and ham sandwich, Taylor ham and egg <laughs> cheese, that's what it's at. <laughs> yes, bagel or roll? <sighs> bagel, bagel, everything a, or plain? Yeah, bagel, uh, plain, 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 plain. plain? All right, I'm yeah, gonna. Because then it takes the taste away from the Taylor ham. Yeah, Taylor you gotta ham. taste all that sodium. That's gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I want to taste all 2,300 milligrams of sodium. I'm ingesting right now. Oh, my God. We got to go out to eat. We just have you. Yeah. Are you uh, kidding me? Uh, well, uh, dude, I wish we could talk to you for hours because uh, you are uh, just uh, a fascinating human being. Thanks, and uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, but thank you for joining us on the show, man. Uh, it really it absolutely is an honor, awesome. for sure. It was awesome. Appreciate it, guys. Uh, where can people follow you? Uh, where, where where are your DMs locked? That <laughs> people DMs can follow are locked you? at Beth787. You'll find me that on Instagram. Instagram. All right. Okay. Very All right. cool. Right. Listen, 
for Giuseppe Rossi. This is I mean, un- this is absolute honor. <laughs> we end the show, right? Uh, we're going to do that, or? Uh, no, with this, well, we, we'll add that to, yeah. uh, to tomorrow's episode. Let's do it. Why so normally do when we end the show, the, the yeah. show is called The Cooligans, right? Yeah. Uh, we, we just scream The Cooligans. It's like a very You'll fun, know when to do it. silly way to end a, a soccer podcast. It's a little aggressive, <laughs> but you get it. Sure. Um, so we're going to include you in that. So, you, so nice, please sweet. feel free uh, to join in. So for uh, Giuseppe Rossi. Yeah. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And and together, what are we? The The Cooligans! What's up? It's the world champion, Judah Friedlander, and you're watching The Cooligans. Why? Because you're cool. This is what winners look like right here, man. I mean, you're looking at us. Right now with my legs, I just juggled the ball 80,000 times. (laughs) You missed it. Yeah. He's been playing keepy-uppy since I met him. Yep. Look faster, guys. (laughs) Go Team USA. (laughs)